Do you notice something wrong in the world today? Can you feel it? Are you ready for it? More importantly, do you know Christ? Sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we gather to discuss a topic that is increasingly relevant in our modern age, the targeting of believers by the adversary, the devil, through technology. Our key scriptures today will guide us in understanding how the devil uses cell phones, smart TVs, social media, and other technological devices to lead us into sin and false doctrine. We will explore why it is crucial to be wise and vigilant, and why sometimes it may even be best for early believers to abstain from using these devices altogether. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your wisdom and guidance. Open our hearts to the truths of your word and help us to understand the dangers of the adversary schemes through technology. May your Holy Spirit move within us, illuminating our minds and strengthening our spirits. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Apostle Peter warns us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. This verse underscores the need for constant vigilance in our spiritual walk. The devil is always on the prowl, looking for ways to devour our faith and lead us astray. In our modern world, one of his most effective tools is technology. Technology has brought about unprecedented convenience and connectivity. However, it has also become a powerful means through which the adversary can infiltrate our lives, sow seeds of doubt, and lead us into sin. The devices we use daily, cell phones, smart TVs, computers, and social media platforms are not inherently evil, but they can be used by the devil to accomplish his purposes. To understand this, we must first recognize the nature of the devil and his desire to be like God. In Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 14, we read about the fall of Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. The devil's desire to be like God is evident in his ambition to ascend above the heights of the clouds and be everywhere at once. While only God is omnipresent, the devil uses technology to create an illusion of omnipresence, allowing him to spy on us and influence our thoughts and actions. One of the primary ways the adversary uses technology is by promoting false doctrines. Through the internet and social media, false teachings can spread rapidly, reaching millions of people almost instantly. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to 4, Paul warns, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, 
but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Many people, in their desire for something new or exciting, turn to teachings that deviate from the true gospel. These false doctrines can be particularly appealing because they often promise quick fixes, prosperity, or a form of spirituality that requires no real commitment or sacrifice. Social media platforms are breeding grounds for such teachings. The algorithms that drive these platforms are designed to keep users engaged, often by showing them content that aligns with their interests and beliefs. This can create echo chambers where false teachings are reinforced and spread. As believers, we must be discerning and test everything against the Word of God. The adversary also uses technology to tempt us into sin. The accessibility and anonymity of the internet make it easy for people to engage in sinful behaviors, such as viewing pornography, engaging in online gambling, or participating in illicit relationships. Jesus warns us in Matthew 5:28, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. The internet provides ample opportunities for lustful thoughts and actions. The devil knows that once we are ensnared by these sins, it becomes increasingly difficult to break free. In addition to promoting false doctrines and tempting us into sin, the adversary uses technology to distract us from our relationship with God. The constant notifications, messages, and updates can keep our minds occupied with trivial matters, leaving little room for prayer, meditation, and studying the Bible. In Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, we read about Mary and Martha. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Like Martha, we can become so distracted by the busyness of life and the constant demands of technology that we miss out on the good part, spending time with Jesus and listening to his word. To overcome the adversary's schemes through technology, we must be wise and vigilant. Here are some practical steps we can take. Firstly, we must immerse ourselves in the Word of God. In Psalm 119, verse 105, we read, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Bible is our guide and our defense against the lies of the enemy. By studying and meditating on Scripture, we equip ourselves with the truth and strengthen our faith. This enables us to discern false doctrines and resist temptation. Secondly, we should establish healthy boundaries with technology. This may include setting specific times for checking emails and social media, turning off notifications during prayer and Bible study, and creating tech-free zones in our homes. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 16, Paul exhorts us, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. By managing our use of technology wisely, we can reclaim our time and focus on our relationship with God. Thirdly, we must seek accountability. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 10, we read, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Accountability partners whether friends, family members, or fellow believers, can help us stay on track and avoid the pitfalls of technology. By sharing our struggles and successes with others, we build a support network that strengthens our resolve and encourages us in our faith. 
Fourthly, we should engage in regular self-examination and repentance. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, Paul urges, Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Regularly assessing our spiritual health and confessing our sins keeps us humble and dependent on God's grace. This practice helps us identify areas where technology may be leading us astray and allows us to make necessary adjustments. Lastly, we must cultivate a heart of gratitude and contentment. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13, Paul writes, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. A heart of gratitude and contentment shields us from the envy and covetousness that often drive our use of technology. By focusing on God's blessings and trusting in his provision, we can find satisfaction in him alone. The adversary uses technology as a powerful tool to lead us into sin and false doctrine. By being wise and vigilant, we can protect ourselves from his schemes and stay true to our walk with God. Immersing ourselves in scripture, establishing healthy boundaries, seeking accountability, engaging in self-examination and repentance, and cultivating gratitude and contentment are essential practices for overcoming the challenges of living in a technologically advanced world. Let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truths you have revealed to us today. Help us to be wise and vigilant in our use of technology so that we may guard our hearts and minds against the schemes of the adversary. Strengthen our faith and empower us to walk in righteousness so that we may draw closer to you and reflect your love to the world. May your Holy Spirit guide us and transform us, that we may be faithful to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for accompanying us on this enlightening journey through Be Wise and Vigilant, overcoming the adversary in the age of technology. The study today and walking with God has hopefully brought the Holy Spirit to you, and I hope to have helped you too. We are excited to announce that Bible Adventures for Children is coming soon. This new series is designed to help children learn about the teachings of the Bible in a fun and engaging way. Some of the artistic artwork seen in this video will also be featured in the cartoon series. Please stay tuned for the release to help children because as you know, the dark forces are targeting our children and they are the future of our world and of utmost importance to Jesus Christ. We now extend an invitation to you, not merely to support our ministry, but to become an integral part of our divine mission and purpose. Visit our website at awakeningrighteousness.com where you will discover a free blog, Christian canvas art, and a vast range of Christian books that delve even deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. Each book serves as a beacon, illuminating the path to awaken the righteous version of yourself. By standing with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to disseminate the teachings of the Bible and ignite faith in many hearts. You have the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. God be with you. Amen.